Bootstrap is the most popular CSS framework, and it makes it easier to build great looking websites. David teaches this course, and he has a bunch of experience in Bootstrap, and even helped create a popular Bootstrap library. Hey YouTube, my name is David, and today I prepared for you a crash course for Bootstrap 5, so the most common front-end framework used around the world. Um, I'm a co-founder of mdbootstrap.com, uh, so I think uh, we are the one of the best people to teach you that because what MDB is, is actually a material design connected with Bootstrap. So we've created an uh, open source library where we actually use Bootstrap 5. And we've been doing this for five years already. Uh, we started back in 2015 when the Bootstrap 3 was the current version. Then we migrate to Bootstrap 4. And now, obviously, we are using Bootstrap 5. Uh, so once you finish that crash course, you might be interested in checking this out. Uh, because as I said, this is the library where we decide uh, to um, connect material design from Google, so the specific design which comes from uh, Google Apps uh, with uh, the Bootstrap. So yeah, we have a hell of a lot of experience in that. Uh, what we're going to cover in this uh, video, uh, what Bootstrap actually is, uh, and just in a few words, uh, because uh, you're going to see this on the real examples. Then I'm going to guide you through the installation and the setup. So how to start working with it. Uh, there are going to be a few ways of how you can add the Bootstrap to your project. Then we're going to cover the most important part, which is a grid system. So um, this would make uh, Bootstrap so famous. And we'll be also um, using and learning how to use uh, different components. And finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to build a page from scratch using uh, Bootstrap. So what the Bootstrap is, uh, long story short, is the most popular front-end framework uh, around the globe now. So let me give you some numbers. In 2013, Bootstrap ran 1.6% uh, of top million sites. Then back in 2016, Bootstrap ran already 15%. In 2018, it was already 18% and nowadays it's more than 20% uh, around the globe. So it's a huge number. It's a really, really widely used uh, library. And uh, there is this um, page which is called Bill With, which gives Bootstrap a 72% of share of the framework market. So within all the pages which are utilizing any frameworks, Bootstrap has 72% of it. So I believe this is a good reason uh, to know Bootstrap. Uh, why should you use Bootstrap? Well, there are many, many different reasons why uh, to do it, but obviously that increase your development speed. So if you use the existing components like you've seen um, on the screen before, uh, you've gonna just save a lot of time. You could create all of that by yourself, but there's no point because it's been created for you and it's been tested by the millions of different developers. Um, responsiveness, this is what made Bootstrap actually so famous. So but now it's obvious when you create a page, it has to be responsive. But back in the days, in 2015, that wasn't that obvious. And Bootstrap Grid was the revolutionary tool which changed a lot in the web development. Now, obviously, uh, when you are a developer, uh, if you use library, that prevent you from repetition. So you don't write pretty much the same code in a different ways for different projects. Um, so that gives you, that adds the consistency to your project because just reusing the same code. Uh, bootstrap takers of the browser Bootstrap takes care about the browser compatibility, uh, and I think it has the one of the largest community in the world. So if you have any issue with it or if you don't know how to do it, simply you know search for it, Google for it, or just ask question on one of the one of the you know Facebook groups or, or Stack Overflow, and then you're gonna get answer very very quickly. And finally, uh, you can customize it to your needs. So these are the components which are there and we will be going through most of them so we're gonna put our hands on the keyboard and we're gonna start um, using them uh, so we're gonna just um, create something out of it so yeah I mean without further ado let's jump into installation In order to install Bootstrap, we need to navigate to getbootstrap.com and you can already see that there are um, multiple ways on how you can install uh, Bootstrap on how you can add Bootstrap to your project. So you can already see that you can use it with NPM projects. Uh, you can also use CDN or you can simply download it. So I'm going to show you all three 
uh, option. So let's start with the download option. So I'm going to hit a download button that's going to redirect me to this page. Obviously, it might look a little bit different because uh, Bootstrap is continuously updating the uh, documentation. Uh, however, it should look more like uh, this. And now once we are on the uh, download uh, page, let's hit this download compiled CSS and JS and let's save it. Mm, so that's gonna store it on my hard drive and then let's go to this dist folder and let's unzip it to the destination of our choice. So I'm gonna put it over here and let's uh, wait a second to unzip it. So as you can see, it will contain CSS and JS. So let's um, oh, actually let's uh, leave it like this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open uh, the um, project in the Visual Studio Code. OK, and let's create a new file. So I'm going to hit new file in text HTML. Now I'm going to type exclamation mark and press tab. This is what Emmet does. If you are not familiar with Emmet, please check tutorials on that uh, because I will be using this. Uh, I will also explain how to do it, but I strongly encourage you to get familiar with it because it's going to speed up your development. And actually, um, one way of doing, of using or speeding up this development is to use um, is it like this. So instead of typing the um, the, the full formula for linking the CSS and JS, I'm going to just type link and press tab. And that's going to give me uh, this, um, this tag uh, pre-filled. And I'm just going to say CSS slash and I'm going to search for bootstrap CSS file. So that's going to load the CSS and the same for the body uh, for the JS um, before the ending uh, body tag. So I'm going to type script source and then hit tab and I'm going to do the same. So JS slash bootstrap bootstrap um, JS. Now, if you want to load just the bootstrap JS, you need to uh, remember also to um, to install or to add uh, popper if you want to like uh, if you want to use it because bootstrap depends on uh, on the popper js so you need to go to popper js web page and then either download it or, or load it via cdn uh, but just to show you um, that it's working let's create h1 hello bootstrap world and let's open this in uh, with the live server. So this should open the browser now. And it will, um, I can already see for those who are familiar with Bootstrap that the font has changed already. This is the default Bootstrap font, but let's check the console where we're gonna see that our Bootstrap has been actually loaded. By the way, I've just opened this uh, console. This is part of uh, Web Developer Tools. Uh, I did it with uh, pressing a combination of Control Shift I, uh, but you can also uh, do it from here. So click on the menu, uh, those three uh, lines over here, this hamburger, so-called, and then go to More Tools and Developer Tools. So that's how you can open or and close it. And now we can see the error here, but this is regarding the FAF icon, which browser tries to load. So the icon which is showed over here, obviously we don't have any, so we can skip this warning. And now if we go to a network tab and refresh our page, again, we're going to see uh, all the requests which our page is doing. So obviously, except for the index HTML, so the file itself, the HTML file, which we just created, we can also see that Bootstrap CSS and Bootstrap JS has been loaded successfully. Now, as I mentioned before, if we would like to use, for example, popover um, component, which relies on popper dependency, we would have to uh, also add popper JS here. So before loading the bootstrap JS, or there is the other option. So instead of uh, loading uh, bootstrap JS, uh, we can also uh, do it uh, by loading the bundle. So the bundle contains all the dependencies, right? So if you don't want to add the separate dependency over here, uh, you can simply load bundle instead. Now, this is the, uh, the most basic way of uh, start using Bootstrap. So by downloading the source file, now let's move to the, the next option. 
If you don't want to download and move and zip files to your project manually, there is a faster way to do it. So let's see how we can start using Bootstrap um, using CDN. Um, and then again, there are two options. So here we uh, we can have option with the um, bundled uh, JS, which um, contains all the dependencies or we can use mm, the separate uh, option where we have the bootstrap loaded separately and popper uh, as well so let's see how it works um, let's create a new folder here and let's call it cdn let's open this in um, visual studio code let's create new file index.html exclamation mark tab that's going to create the basic structure and now let's just copy uh, first the CSS and place it within our head and now let's copy the bundled version down below the body and then again let's uh, add h1 um, hello world cdn world let's say and let's open this with v live server and then you can also see that this is working fine let's open console to verify refresh and we have bootstrap CSS and uh, bootstrap bundle mean js uh, and as i mentioned uh, instead of this single line over here we could also use two entries for the uh, popper and the bootstrap separately so let's save it let's check whether it's working fine and now you can see that the popper is being loaded separately okay now let's move to the next installation option uh, which is npm So for those of you who are uh, creating your project with the use of the package managers like NPM or Yarn, probably that's going to be the easiest way to um, add Bootstrap to your project. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's create a new folder, uh, NPM. Let's open this with uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, and let's quickly initialize the empty npm project if you are not familiar with npm i strongly encourage you to watch uh, some of the tutorials on how to use npm because that uh, uh, definitely gonna speed up your development and with use of frameworks like react viewer and angular this is kind of basics and um, our basic knowledge is so uh it's, it's very wise to to be familiar with it so let's do npm init to initialize a new project it's gonna ask a couple of questions uh, so uh, the project name let's call it bootstrap npm and then let's just um, accept all the other default values we could uh, we could uh, decide upon description entry point and few other options which are not relevant at this moment that's going to create a uh, packet json file with all the settings and now again let's create index.html file and what we're going to do now we're going to install the dependency so i'm going to use npm install uh, bootstrap which gonna uh, install all the dependencies under node modules so as you can see we have now node modules bootstrap and then we have js css scss uh, so for those of you who want to um, somehow customize the bootstrap probably this would be uh, the way to work with so linking the scss uh, we will be using this so let's uh, now link our um, our uh, dependencies here so again in head uh, let's do link and now we need to say node modules bootstrap dist css and then bootstrap css we can also use min uh, so minimize version of css and for the body we're going to do exactly the same so link uh, no, sorry, script source and then go to node modules bootstrap dist js this time and bootstrap bundle js so this will give us um, again bootstrap plus the dependencies mm, so let's do h1 hello npm word and let's open this in live server so we can see already the font is there and let's refresh network so we have bootstrap css and bundle if you don't want to use the bundle uh, but install the popper separately you can obviously do it so just type npm install at popper js slash core minus minus save and that will uh, store it in 
under node modules. So now you will see uh, and two folders here, so popper and bootstrap, and obviously you can link it now to uh, your project. Okay, so if you want to understand why Bootstrap becomes so famous, we have to start with the, the grid system because this was the real game changer back in the days. Um, and uh, before we start learning, because uh, before I'm going to show you uh, how to start using this uh, in your projects, in your website, um, let me start um, perhaps with uh, some demo uh, so you would better understand it. So. Um, I've got three examples here for you. Um, so to un to give you uh, some insight, to some feeling, uh, what this grid and what this bootstrap is about and why uh, so many people on the website use it, uh, let's have a look at the following example. So the, mm, the whole uh, thing about the responsiveness is that the content should adjust to uh, the screen of the size which you are using. So you shouldn't prepare like two different version of the page, the same page for different devices like mobile and the desktop, which have one which will simply behave like a water, which depending on what you pour it into, it will just, you know, use uh, the whole space available for it. So um, the bootstrap uses, uh, the bootstrap grid um, uses columns to, to, to achieve that goal. And what you can see here, this is like the very basic example. So on a big screen, when we have a plenty of space, we can easily um, fit this uh, main content here and the sidebar on the right side, right? We have a full screen, we, we have enough space, we could even make it a bigger, larger. But however, what's gonna happen when we start shrinking this, uh, you're gonna see that at certain point of time, there is not enough space for, you know, the entire content to fit in, right? It becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you have a lot of content over here, um, you may end up in a situation where it's just not enough, right? If you if you go to the to the even smaller, then what's gonna happen, thanks to Bootstrap, is they gonna stack one below each other. So um, if you open our Web Developer Console and use this mobile. Uh, option, you can choose one of the predefined uh, screen size. So for example, we're going to check for iPhone SE and then you will see how this actually looks on on the phone, right? So uh, you can also check some tablets, I believe here. Um, yeah, even on the Nest, Google Nest Hub. So this is more of a, like a tablet uh, view. Uh, so this allows us to create very complex structure like this one. So imagine the page, you have some magazine or whatsoever with some sidebar, header, footer, and so on. And thanks to Bootstrap, you can make it to behave differently on a different screen. So I'm not sure if you noticed that, is that, mm, that some of them, some of them, they simply disappeared, right? So our sidebar is just gone. So you can not only reorder things depending on the screen size, but also uh, make them visible or invisible at the certain screen sizes. And uh, finally, in this last example, um, hopefully explain will explain to you the concept of these columns. So what Bootstrap does, how does it work, is that Bootstrap uh, uses a rows and a columns and within each row you have 12 units to use to spare um, so you can use them uh, as you like if you want to uh, spend the whole 12 units the units of width um, on the single row or on the single column right so you want this main content to be the full to have the full width you are free to do so you can just say that okay this column will take 12 units. However, you can obviously divide it differently and use different proportion. So this example here, how does it work? And what you see here, this double XL, XL, large, medium, SM, these are the screen size and we're going to cover them just in a second. So this is what you have to get familiar with. So Bootstrap de de defines a different breakpoints. So um, these are like this kind of, you know, areas that we can define that the extra small are the mobile phones, small, uh, between small and medium, it's something, I don't know, for example, uh, a huge phones or the phones with the larger screen, like a couple of inches, then the medium could be tablet and the large uh, is going to be like desktop and so on. Um, so 
you can define the size of your column for each and every screen size and that's what you can see over here so um, this column has multiple properties or actually you could say multiple width assigned to it so where we are currently at now is this size so it's double uh, large so this is for the screens which are bigger than 1400 pixels and obviously we, this is bigger so if you check it here it shows that we are now at 1600 but see what's going to happen if we start shrinking below this breakpoint right so uh, I defined it. I want this column to have the unit of one and that's why we can fit 12 columns next to each other, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, what's going to happen if I start shrinking the screen and I'm going to reach the, the breakpoint? All of a sudden, the, the, the size of the column has changed and now the second size has been applied. So now each of the column um, has size of two units. So, and now, obviously, because as you remember, as we said, this is 12 in total, we can fit only six columns next to each other. And that's what happened here, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and another six has just been wrapped. Let's continue and let's uh, continue shrinking the screen. And then we re when, once we reach the next one, uh, the next breakpoint, we are falling into this uh, rule. Oh, the, the, this size, which is three. Now, obviously, if we have size of three, we can just fit four because four times three gives us 12. And then if I continue shrinking that, I'm going to get into next one, which is now call MD4, which means each column has size of four. So we can fit three. If I continue shrinking, I will go into size SM6, which means that each of this has six. And finally, at the smallest screen, each of the column will take the full available width for uh, the screen. So this is how it was designed. This is how this uh, is so amazing. So uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's learn how to use this Bootstrap grid now. So starting with breakpoints, uh, I already told you how does it work. So um, Bootstrap uh, comes with predefined breakpoints. Um, so you have six of them. And these uh, breakpoints are usually, you know, they are adjusted to the most common screen. So um, you can customize them if you want. You can change it. Uh, however, I think it would be just wise to go with the default value. Now, um, one, we, we will be doing some coding in a second. Uh, so I want you to understand that this grid consists of three uh, elements. So what we always need if you want to start using this is grid, it's a row, and these are columns, one or multiple. So we do start with uh, the container. So the container is going to be the... Um, the very first element which we which we need which we require if we want to work start working with the um, bootstrap grid and um, so let's start here um, I have the starting template here with just loaded bootstrap CSS and JS and let's uh, let's create a container here so you could see how does it work and some content and let's add I'm gonna add class border and let's open this one okay so this is our container as you can see it has some margins from the left and from the right side so this is the very first thing you should know so if you want to use the container to, to use the full width so you would have your columns starting from very left you should use something called container fluid and what it does it will make you use the whole width all available here however you can also do something which is called uh, container combined with the with the breakpoint so if you want to mix it so depending on the screen you want your um, container uh, behave differently you can obviously and easily do this with uh, bootstrap so what you're gonna see here is this is container however when we start shrinking and we go below the medium breakpoint then all of a sudden the container start behaving like a container fluid right so you can simply say that you want to uh, have 
the container fluid up to until certain breakpoint, for example, large. So if you can see it uh, from this table, right? So this uh, is gonna have the 100% until this resolution, this screen size is met. So this is the very first thing, it's container. Now let's move to a grid. So the grid um, consists of rows and equals. Row, there is not much special about rows. Um, so uh, let me just um, use a bit of CSS here. I'm going to add some styles, which are going to help us to see the columns. So uh, we're going to see them uh, with your own eyes. So I'm going to do uh, something like this. And let's start with this very basic example. So as I said, um, within our container, we want to use a row and inside our row i want to use columns so you can use something as simple as call so i have two columns now and let's just say call one call two let's see how does it look like so now you see or actually maybe maybe you don't see this yet uh, but if we go to inspector, you will see that this is our row and this is container. So container is a little bit wider and then we have a row here. Um, usually you have, you can have multiple rows here, uh, but what is really interesting are these columns. And I'm going to show you an example uh, in a second with a few rows. Uh, but what's going on here? Now, if we uh, use just the column, um, Bootstrap will basically uh, do the calculation, do the math, and it will automatically um, assign the proper width for each column, which means that if I'm going to give you more columns, it will calculate the width and it's going to use the equal values for each, right? Now, if I want to have more, obviously, I can just have more rows with multiple columns. Um, you can also have... Um, more columns within a single row but probably you are uh, thinking or you might be asking now okay what if i want to use a specific size for a different column and there is nothing um, easier than that so um, again uh, breakpoints uh, comes to the picture and we can use uh, we can use a columns uh, of a given size and I'm going to show you two different options here so let's get back to our code here let's get rid of this one and now let's do one thing we can do strictly with, with saying just call six or let's do something else because six is equal so let's do call four and call four so what's going to happen as you can see we said that this should have width of four and this also should have a width of four units and now if we add another column here let's call it auto bootstrap will obviously automatically uh, fill up the this um, remaining space and we can play with it to achieve different results right now um this is however not um as flexible i mean um, sometimes you want to use it because you want to uh you want your columns to always have the same size depending i mean regardless of the of the screen size so that's possible however more often you will actually use uh variable uh with content which means that um except for providing the size you will also want to provide the breakpoint what does it mean let, let me show you that quickly so if you do call md and now 8 plus md4 you're gonna see that we have this nice 8 and 4 distinction here however when we start shrinking your screen below medium what's gonna happen is that our calls will take the full width of uh full width uh available within the container and now as you can also see our container md uh is changing to the 100 percent if i stick it like this it will it will re keep the margins here available uh however and uh, those margins are gone 
below the certain level because basically Bootstrap assumes that if you are on mobile, you, you don't really want to have these margins. And if you want, then you should just do and add them uh, manually. So um, I hope you do understand now how does it work. Obviously, you can, first of all, you can change this uh, to something else. Um, so let's see, let's do a large. So this is one thing. So now we're gonna get full width already on the medium size and we're gonna get this ratio on the bigger size. However, the most important thing is that you can also mix and match this like call MD, I don't know, let's uh, say six and here six, which means that we have now three use cases. So a larger and larger than larger, medium, and smaller than medium, right? I hope you are getting this now. So you can, that's how you can create a very, uh, very, very uh, complex examples. And the one, uh, let me show you quickly, uh, one from the, um, from the demo which I was showing you. So this is the example with this columns uh, having very, um, actually all the possible scenario, right? So we have the size for each and every screen size, which allows us, whoops, not this one, this one, which allows us to really, really create um, complex uh, scenario where you will be just, you know, changing uh, the size of uh, all of that. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue. Let's see what else we have. I mean, there are different options. Um, for mixing uh, these columns together. Um, let's see, and let's go through the most common uh, ones. So what you probably are gonna need uh, quite often is an alignment. So let's have a look at this example. Okay, and now we need to do uh, order. Let's get rid of this two rows now for a second. And now let's uh, make it uh, a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna uh, do this manually. So now you can see that our row uh, has some height because of some content which might be in there. And if we want to align them to the top, we basically say row align item start. And then if you want to do it in center, we just do the center. If you want to be aligned to the, to the bottom, we just say stop align items end. Um, so this is, this, is the, uh, this is the alignment. Uh, vertical alignment and obviously we also might want to have the horizontal alignment so uh, coming back to this uh, let's have this container a row and then let's have call of size two um, and actually we want to have two of them one and a two and now if we want to justify them into the center we will do something like this and this will justify them to the center right so regardless of uh, size they will be always uh, aligned to the center and there are different options uh, which you can obviously use here uh, so you have around between uh, and uh, depending on the use case you would like to use Okay, and um, let's move to gutters now. Um, so the gutters are responsible for the um, for the distance between the columns uh, here. Uh, so let uh, let's use this following example. Hold on, I'll just add this one. Hold on, this div is uh, okay. Okay, so here we have gutters and actually uh, let me reset this. So uh, these are gutters and I'm going to add some um, custom style here so you could see uh, one more uh, thing because it's not uh, easily visible. Mm, so uh, 
within each column I have created also the extra div with the background so you could see uh, how actually the content uh, goes within uh, within the div uh, itself okay so before we start talking about the gutter um, I need to explain one thing which is um, uh, used a lot within the bootstrap basically when uh, you've seen me using this uh, uh, margin right and I said my what does it mean this means that I want to have margin applied in the y axis so uh, it's for the top and for the bottom if I would say mx I want talking about the uh, left and the right and the same applies for the gutter right and uh, by the way we don't use gutter on container we do it on row so let's start with setting this to zero okay so these are the default uh, sp spacing and then the paddings and margins for the for the columns uh, and, the, and the grid bootstrap grid and now if we say g0 we're gonna set them to uh, we're gonna basically reset them to zero now if I uh, let's see how it's gonna happen if I'm gonna be changing this in the x axis what's gonna change so this is one this is two this is three this is four and this is five so basically we are eliminating this um, Budding here from the left and the right. Let's say one and a five, right? So this uh, how you how you change uh, this in the x-axis, and let's do G Y, and then a set from one, three, four, and five. So this um, you need to understand. Uh, what you need to understand is that G X or the gutter uh, in the x position works actually. Um, uh, here on this on the space between a column and a row and in the y position it's actually working in between the columns here right so they, they are wrapped up and they, it's talking about the space over here which you can uh, see on this example um, obviously you could try to do it uh, with the margin and padding utility which we're gonna cover in a second however uh, this is just the easier way which was introduced in um, in the newest bootstrap to to work on the more uh, complex scenario when you have multiple columns and want to you want to work and maintain the spacing in between them Okay, so let's move to the first component. So I'm gonna cover um, the components from the most common one. Uh, so let's start with uh, buttons because we use them a lot. You can also see them being used here on the Bootstrap Docs page. Uh, so uh, let me quickly open the workspace. So I created a new folder for components so you can easily reuse my, my code if you want. If you want, you can download it from the GitHub. Uh, so let me create a new file for uh, buttons. So I'm going to call it buttons HTML and I'm just going to copy paste the uh, basic setup. Okay. And open this in the live server. And now let's uh let's grab one of the buttons actually you know um the more you work with the bootstrap obviously the, the more you get familiar with it you will know this syntax by heart so if you start typing button and then add some classes like btn and then the color we're going to talk about the colors uh, very soon but now for your information bootstrap comes with a uh, predefined colors and it calls them like primary, secondary, success, danger and so on and you can adjust these colors. We're gonna cover that a little bit later. For now let's just use primary and let's uh, use some, do something like click me and let's see how it looks like. So you can see already that you have this button start, right? So obviously um, if you would go with the uh, just simple button it looks like this and simply by adding these classes btn and then color you are getting this styles over here and you can see more of it over here so let's just add a few more so we can see them right so these are different predefined buttons now bootstrap allows you to uh, easily uh, a adjust 
uh, both color and as well as size and a few other properties. Uh, so for example, you, here you can see that Bootstrap comes with the so-called outline buttons, uh, right? Which uh, which which have right here. Let's just let's just do it like here. So I'm gonna add the new. Uh, I'm gonna add the new row here. So this is container. Let me add another one. So we could see them next to each other or one below the other. So this is the primary and this primary outline, secondary and so on and so on. Um, here you see the light or actually you can't see it. So it's used uh, in the certain uh, circumstances. Um, but other than, than, than just the outline, uh, we can also easily adjust the size of our button. So if we want to do uh, the container, uh, by the way, I'm going to add some classes here, MY5. We're going to learn about it as well uh, soon, but this will give us some spacing here. Um, so if you want to do something larger, like uh, like the larger or smaller button, we can simply use this BTN large. So let me just use this one here and the same for small. So if we do BTN SM, we're going to get the small and let's add just to compare all together let me just remove it so just call it the regular button so you will see the difference right so this is large this is the regular and this is the small button so you can do it um, you can also disable uh, any button uh, simply by adding the disabled uh, property and then as you can see that's also going to be styled right so it's going to look like now uh, this there are a couple more so you can uh, you have the block button so if you want to have the full width um you can use this block buttons uh, and actually you know the button is commonly very commonly uh, used uh, within the bootstrap because uh, for example uh, you can use it to to toggle state so as you can see here you have the active um so if i click on it it becomes active so you can see the color is changing and then if i click again it uh, it is getting deactivated um, and lots more because you also gonna see um, for example buttons being used as a drop downs for example uh, like here um, so it's really it's really wise to get familiar with uh, with it um, then there are, there are methods uh, related to, to buttons it's a little bit more advanced so uh, we're gonna leave it for for the later uh, but one important thing regarding the buttons is also that you can um, like everything actually in bootstrap you can easily uh, adjust it using or adjusting the variables which comes uh, with the sas with the bootstrap sas files so uh, if you want to change the generic look of the of, uh, of buttons or you want to create new ones you can also do it with the use of uh, scss next very commonly used components are cards so you're gonna see them uh, almost everywhere so uh, let's see how they look um, in uh, the real world so here is the basic example uh, by the way if you if you check the docs you can see that it's like it's a really huge it's tremendous uh, amount of uh, examples which you can use with bootstrap so we're gonna cover the most important ones so let's start with the with the examples uh, the basic example shows us the uh, one of the very often seen cards so the card with the image title um, and some kind of footer it's not exactly the footer but yeah let's uh, let's call it this way i'm going to show you the real footer in a second so let's copy this one mm. Because this is going to show us the issue with uh, which you're going to face if you start using this for the very first time. Um, let's add some image here. So I'm going to use uh, image pixel for that. So this is very interesting um, uh, service which allows you easily to uh, use some images. Uh, so you could uh, have the real image and you can easily change size. So here we have 200 by 300. So uh, let's see how it looks in our case so this is the card actually we didn't want like this we wanted to have let's say 300 by 200 so something more like this one and and some spacing here um, 
As you can see, every time we refresh, we're getting some random pipes. So it's it's pretty cool to see this uh, uh, used. It's kind of testing, right? Because you can already see we have a different option. Um, now talking about it, let's um, jump into the sizing. So uh, because here our uh, card has a certain sign, and you can see that this is because we added some style over here. If we remove it. Um, you're gonna notice that if you want to start that was what we're gonna do in a second if you start typing this uh, Just by hand right so if you just create this and at this uh, Class card which is actually making a card uh, looks like a card giving some borders um, to it um, You're gonna notice that this is gonna happen. So it's gonna take the full wave uh, available um, so how we can how we can um, work of them let's go to sizing so there are a few options uh, there so first is obviously uh, already known to you so if you use a row and then you're gonna add let's say call two in it and you're gonna wrap up your card into it so you will be able to decide upon the size by using simply grid so depending on the column size you're gonna get smaller or bigger cards um, then the next option here will be to use these uh, utilities so let me uh, get rid of uh, this one or let me go with the another row here and let's get this card again from here so let me copy this card entirely and paste it here and now it will take the whole wave, whole wave available and now we can use uh, the utility which we're going to cover uh, but you can already learn this one which is uh, W75 which stands for wave 75 a percent and you can see this example here I'm not sure if you can clearly see this this is uh, this stands for 75 percent which is over here this one stands for 50 percent which stands over here so let's uh, give it a try let's say 50 percent we want to have our card to fulfill the 50 percent of the space uh, here um, so this is the, 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 the second option and the third one you actually have seen because we've been using this RAM uh, before so let's just add it um, for the sake of uh, consistency so you would have all your cards um, in all possible scenarios so let's add just styles and now we have three uh, I'm done. Um, okay, now let's get back to the to the basics. So uh, let's uh, go uh, with the new row over here, and let's do a call three for the sizing. Mm, and let's see how the very basic uh, basic card looks like. So let's do uh, just the card, and let's uh, do some lorem five. Let's give it here okay and let's add some actually you know what let me give it to the top right and let's add my five and let's get this one to the top so we could easily see this one okay here okay so it's here on top so this how the uh, how the how the card looks like uh, so it doesn't look good yet but what we are gonna get if we're gonna add card body that's gonna look much better than that than what we've got before and this is already looking giving us some nice look it has some paddings it has some margins so this is something which sometimes some people call panels right so you could have those panels over uh, here now what we can do uh, we can add certain elements and this is very cool because uh, you can compose your cards from the sub elements as you wish right so um, if you want to if you want to add for example the image to to our card you can uh, easily do that by adding this still within our card but above body you can add image with the class card image top and reuse our image here and this will automatically um, link this image to our card mm. 
I'm gonna skip the list groups for a second. As you can see, these these are uh, kind of few panels connected to each other. And let's move to the header and the footer section because that's what is interesting. Um, so uh, let's let me get the uh, the another card over here. And instead of the image, let's use uh, a card um, header. So this is what we're going to add here. So let's get rid of this image here and let's add um, card header instead. So this is our card header. And it's going to add a nicely looking header. Now, since we have header, obviously we can add some footer as well. So let's use example of this one. Actually, let me just copy paste this one. Um, so uh, let's add it here. Here we have a text muted. Uh, let's see how it looks without that first. So here we have footer. And if we add this text muted, it just slightly mute this to make it less visible as this is the uh, footer obviously and this is uh, we don't want to see this uh, like now screaming to our uh, users right so this is how you work with that and I, I think you can have really nice um, results using that let's have a look at predefined examples because they're going to give you also some idea of what you can uh, achieve with that here uh, are examples with cards within the navigation we're going to cover that in the navigation part um, so here you have also the image examples and how to work with them uh, but let's uh, slightly uh, move further to this example so here we have this horizontal card which looks really really nice so let me add another call over here so let's have call three let's paste this example and let's just grab the image again however oh we don't have image here we have image here so um what we're gonna do here we're gonna replace this image or actually these three dots with image now change the ratio so i'm gonna have 200 by 300 now and let's see how it looks now i think it's too small so uh that's because probably here we would like to have it slightly bigger yeah, now it looks better, right? So now we have 3 plus 3 plus 6, so it's some to 12, it's good. And here we have this horizontal card. So I think it really looks nice. Um, but other than that, um, you also have something which is called card groups. So very often you will see, and we're also going to build it at the very end of this tutorial, we're going to build a simple page. Um, so you probably will see something like this when you have a page and then you have your blog and let's say you want to list like last three articles on the page, you would see something like this. So what you could do, you could create like three columns um, with the size of four, so four plus four plus four, or you could use card groups, which would also looks nice so uh again um it's it's pretty much the same as the normal card right you have a cards here the only thing you have to remember is to add this class card group add it up so let's have a look at this one now so we have a row here and let's add a row, another row with some margins in between and now let's uh, replace this one with the image so i want to have this 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 and that and i want to have this image here and this how it looks like i think it really looks it looks really really nice so this is this uh this um card groups how they looks like and and as you can see there are, there are many many more here's the example of uh of the cards next to each other uh so uh, obviously we're not going to cover all of that because there's uh, there's 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 a lot examples but let's get back to a few more examples because they're also interesting um you will probably see them in for example like admin dashboard so you can have this this card 
uh, having different stars. So you can reuse the same colors which you've seen uh, when it comes to buttons. So uh, simply by adding this classes like background primary to our card, right? So here we specified, this is just a simple card. Let's have a look at this example. Um, so let me add, let's see what we have space here. Let's one, two, three, let's add it here before below the card group. So let's have another row and let's have call three. And let's have this card here and let's get rid of this for a second. So this is like normal basic card now, right? But if we start playing with the colors, so I'm gonna revert this text white and the background primary, what we're gonna see is that it will change color to something like that. So uh, let's duplicate this one. So we have call three, one, two, three. So now we should have four cards, one, two, three, four, and let's change um, colors of it. So yeah, I like this, this dark one. So let's go here and choose background dark and text white for the second one. So I believe this is the first. So this is the second one. Um, by the way, this MB stands for margin bottom. So it's adding some margin, uh, margin on the, on the bottom here. Uh, don't worry, we're going to cover the margins uh, in a few seconds. You can see now black one. And yeah, let's just do two more. So let's say info with the text dark for the next one. And for the last one, let's say we want to have text white and danger. So this is the last card here. And voila, these are our cards. And now again, another row for last examples. Let me just copy them uh, to make it faster. So let's just do one, two, three, and a four. So this row, let's paste it. And these are examples of the outline uh, cards. Mm, by the way, it doesn't work here. Let me see why. No, it actually does. It just looks this way, right? Uh, header. Hold on. No, something doesn't work here, but probably because they have to be placed within a call, not row. So here we're gonna have them. Um, yeah, so this are these are border um, with cards or cards with border um, and different examples of this. So as you can see, there are plenty of variation over here, which you can use. Obviously, you can also easily align them uh, and play with it. And, and like everything in, in Bootstrap, you can also work with uh, SAS variables to change, for example, the distances between cards or, or, or background color or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really like this uh, component and, and I, I've been using this a lot uh, in my projects. So I strongly encourage you also to have a look because uh, it's it's very, very useful component. Okay, now we'll jump to a different category, which is uh, content and exactly typography uh, in Bootstrap. So let me uh, quickly create new uh, folder to organize it slightly. So now we'll move to content and I'm just gonna grab uh, the index. So our template from uh, components and let's open this in Visual Studio Code. Okay. So um, Bootstrap comes with um, predefined styles for the for the um, different uh, types of uh, typography. So starting with headings, uh, let me just copy paste this one. Oh, we also need to create new file here, typography. So this is one of the 
so-called uti utilities and bootstrap have more of them um now i can uh, paste it here oh i, I need to get this one and then i'm ready to put it within our container mm, so uh, let's have a row here and let's save it open and let's see what is interesting uh, about the um, about the uh, heading and actually the whole typography is that uh, like almost everything in bootstrap uh, it is um, responsive right so uh, let's check this element and let's see the computed styles um, computed styles so let's have a look at the font size which is currently 31.95 pixel however if i'm gonna start adjusting the screen size you can see that this value is actually changing um, so now it's 40 pixels and then if we shrink it it's going to become smaller uh, to uh, what is it now 24 uh, pixel so this is uh, this is also very uh, very useful while working with um, with bootstrap because obviously uh, it looks just better it adjusts to the screen size now uh, what bootstrap offers you as well is um, the class which will make um, the actually any element to look like the heading so there are situations um, there are situations where we don't really want to uh, have uh, use h1 h2 for let's say uh, different reasons like seo um so uh, let's say these are paragraphs looking like headings and if we just apply these classes like h1 h2 h3 we're gonna get exactly the same look right so we have it here actually we can do it even better so let's do it like this so we could see the difference um, so these are headings let's call them real headings and let's do call md6 two times and let's move this one inside first column and this one into the other one so now we should see them side by side um, let me close this one and slightly make it bigger so now you can see that they look um, exactly the same uh, so if you want for some reason to uh, your whatever paragraph looked like a heading you can do it uh, with use of uh, this stuff uh, bootstrap also comes with um, uh, this display heading so they are slightly bigger so if you really want to something to you know stand out um, to be more visible you can do it with uh, with these displays so let me just uh, show you that so you use classes like display one display two and this will give you that result um, what else uh, obviously it comes with a lot of uh, inline text elements uh, inline tags so we can highlight uh, we can actually um, cross out uh, text so you can ask why um why they are um like duplicated right so you have two for for this one right so uh, here you have this uh, this text is meant to be treated as deleted and this line of text is meant to be treated as a lot longer accurate um so the difference is actually semantics uh right so uh, for example in case of this S here it represents elements that are no longer relevant or no longer uh, accurate while this one was deleted so so this is like a s very a very subtle difference um, but this is uh, what is it all about uh, so uh, yeah that might be new to you but there are different uh, since HTML5 that this, this semantic really does matter so um, you should carefully use it but other than that as you can see you have uh, support for like you know uh, making the bold or uh, you know highlighted text with the use of it so let me just add it to our um to our example so again we could um yeah let's have a new row here and let's have um just put it like this right so we're gonna have uh, all the examples uh, 
in one place. As always, there are more, um, many more examples uh, like abbreviation, like block quotes. Um, so maybe, maybe let's have a look, closer look at the block clause uh, as they might be uh, useful for you. So, oh, row. So uh, whenever we want to use block quote, um, oh, let's do some paragraph and lorem here. So that's how would the uh, normal looks like so doesn't uh, really look different however if we add this class to it now it looks uh, differently so this is the this is the example um, over here so this is the basic block code however you can also mm, use uh, the more extended version with a footer, right? Like here, so we can add uh, this this fig caption uh, with the class block code footer, which will make it uh, looks differently. Um, so let's do this side by side. Call md6. Actually, I want to have two, or maybe uh, let's say even four. Uh, well, I'm going to change the size. I'm going to have three of them. So the second one is with the footer and this one will be the basic one. And then the one which shows you how you can actually align text with the use of the uh, text alignment. So uh, we're going to check that here. You can already see that by using text center or as a te class text center on our uh, element, we can um, we can change the alignment of the text. So let's use the, the last example here, um, right? Uh, so let's just, or actually let's do it this way, just to show you how to do it by yourself. So I'm just gonna add to this feature class text and, and the reason, uh, the reason it's um, it's end now is because uh, and not right and left. It's because uh, since Bootstrap five there is some support for RTL. So from you know in in many countries we do read from from left to right. Uh, so in your case it would be from left to right, I believe. Um, if you're watching me on the camera, but obviously you know, this is not the case for all the countries. So in the in the Arabic countries, uh, it's the other way around. So while they um, added the support for the RTL, they also had to change the naming because obviously left uh, doesn't necessarily always mean that. So if you use RTL, then then it could be confusing. Uh, so now it starts and end. And you're gonna see more on that uh, when we go to the spacing utilities. Now let's just have a look how it looks like. So here are our block quotes. You can see them here and this one is aligned to the right side. Um, finally, um, Bootstrap offers you uh, an option for the, for the list. Uh, so if for some reason you don't want your list uh, to have any kind of you know, dots or points, um, so uh, you can use this list unstyled here. So uh, yeah, let's do it quickly. So we're gonna have UL with uh, class list unstyled okay and inside that i want to have um, li um, li um, with the content uh, line number and we want to have like five of them Oh, no, we want to have like five of those, obviously. Um, so now we're going to have this line over here. And then again, I'm going to quickly do new on order list and with some numbers here, a line multiple by say three. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just using an Emmet, uh, which allows me um, to create easily the different amount of um, elements simply 
by uh, using this uh, the shortcut. So if you don't know that, I strongly encourage you to check the tutorial on the Emmet because it's gonna uh, make your life much more easier. Uh, why I did it uh, like this, I wanted to show you that this class applies only to the uh, to the to the immediate child of those um, uh, of any element you use it on. So this sublines they already have styled again. Mm, and then finally, if you want to use uh, inline, so this is the case usually when you do some kind of navigation, right? So you want to have like a nav bar, right? That what they have over here, for example, this is the this is, that could be used uh, or created with the use of uh, of the list inline list. So all the elements will be basically printed next to each other and no, not one below the other. So again, call md six multiplied by two times and I'm gonna get this one from the documentation and I'm gonna get to grab that one from here and this will show us this next to each other I'm gonna add some spacing later on for you uh, so when you when you refer to this file later on uh, you will clearly see so I'm gonna add something like heading one um, list styles and uh, maybe I'll use cutters or um, Y. Right, so you'll have uh, this separated so you can easily uh, refer to it and, and realize what we are actually talking about. Or maybe it's even better if I do it here. Yeah, we'll give some space in between. Okay, let's move, move, move on. Um, so uh, what is um, also important to mention here is that as I mentioned you um, uh, at the beginning of the section, um, the fonts are responsive, uh, so uh, this is cool, but Bootstrap went even further, step further, and they came with this responsive font sizing, so RFS project. So this is a separate project um, and this is, you can find it on a GitHub. Um, actually, this is really cool because that allows you to change um, not only the font size and that's how then they came up with the name, right? So uh, originally they wanted to, to adjust the font size depending on the screen size. Uh, however, now they mo they went uh, even further because initially it was default they developed to resize the fonts. Um, but nowadays um, RFS is capable of rescaling actually, you know, basically every uh, value of any CSS property with unions like you know par margin pilings border radius and so on and so on um so let me just show you a quick demo over here so if you if you if you watch carefully you're gonna see that when the screen resizes over here also the different um and the different things are changing here so not only the, the font size but also the paddings and, and the margins and this 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 make it uh you know to look um much better for example on the, on the very big screens uh like you know 4k now we're not gonna go into this one because it's a separate project uh but uh, I think it's it's worth to to just 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 uh, be aware of the fact because you might need it to um, at the certain point of time when when it comes and you will have to work on the fonts or some paddings uh, to to make them look good uh, or on for example very 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 huge screen so that's uh, where this RFS uh, might be very useful. Okay, so let's move to the images now. Um, Bootstrap allows you to easily make images responsive. So uh, let's have a look at um, the following example. So um, I'm going to create a div uh, with a border so you could see uh, how it looks like. So let's have uh, let's have a div. Uh, I'm going to give it some custom styles. So for the sake of uh, this tutorial and um, so with um, let's say 40% and also I want to have a border um, 5 pixel red solid so we could see it uh, okay now obviously we need some um, content into it so we could see it so let's add image and let's uh, add some logo here now we can clearly see that this is our this is our div uh, so if we check this in inspector, 
now it's it's become even smaller now because inspector pop-ups here so now the 40 percent is even smaller so uh yeah this is this is the this is the diff right this this part the bluish one and this 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 orange is not um okay so uh as you can see sometimes the the image the content uh just simply go out of our borders and what you can do how you can quickly fix it is by simply adding uh, a class to our image called image fluid and this will make our image responsive so uh yeah i mean that's 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 really basic but also very 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 important um feature feature uh, then if we go to if we go further um let me do h1 my5 and let's uh, go to thumbnail and let's uh, let's have this image however we're gonna change this to image thumbnail so um that will give our image something which let me enlarge it here so it's gonna give this style this border rounded border around it um let's also do uh let's see do uh, let's make it a little bit smaller so uh, with the use of width 25 i just make it uh, smaller now uh, the, finally the the last uh, option you can see here um is how to align how to actually align um, images with use of uh, bootstrap so let's do that now uh, let me close copy this one and then let's have alignment um so basically we will be using the float um utility which we're gonna discuss uh in a second so um yeah let's just do let's just copy this image again uh so this was the one and uh, let's change mm, this one to uh to the float let's say end so this will move oh yeah let's make it smaller So this will move our image to the end and now obviously uh, if we are working with the floating we need to remember to use the clear fix so clear fix um, so because otherwise um, oh, maybe let me show you that um, let's have some paragraph him here uh, otherwise other elements will be floating around it so maybe I will even use lorem 50 so you could see what I'm talking about oh it's too not enough okay fine let's use 100 um, so this is floating our image um, so now if we add the clear fix over here basically that's gonna fix that state now Okay, uh, let me get rid of this paragraph. We don't need it anymore because I want to show you also how you can actually um, center the image with uh, use uh, of bootstrap classes. So let's get this image again. And we can simply do that by uh, adding, by using the flex box. So D block um, MX auto and through 25 and this will center our image um like this one um one more thing actually i didn't mention is that we can easily for example make our image um or give our image uh rounded corners like here simply by by adding this uh rounded class to it uh, and uh, last but not the least, if you are working with picture, um, it's also supported by Bootstrap. So here you have the syntax for working with the pictures and making uh, them also uh, responsive, um, like we did with the previous examples. 
Okay, so now let's move to the utilities, so because this is also one of the most important part of the bootstrap and especially taking into account that uh, recently Tailwind um, become more and more famous and this is a so-called utility first framework. So I would like to also show you uh, that a lot of these utilities options are available uh, within Bootstrap as well. So we're going to go through the utilities, um, but I want to start as always uh, from the most, uh, I believe the most common and most important one, which is uh, spacing. However, we're going to uh, go through all of them. So um, what I did, I prepared this um, sample div with uh, some content here, mm, which is actually styled using styles. And uh, I'm going to recreate this for you uh, just using the bootstrap classes. So we will achieve exactly the same effect with uh, with the use of the bootstrap utilities. So uh, let me do uh, let me do it uh, like this. I'm going to grab this div and I'm going to add it below and let me get rid of all stars over here. So we don't need this, this, that and nor this. Okay, so we have just simple this um, here and uh, let me also add some margin here. Actually, we can already start with um, discussing the spacing utilities. So um, you've already seen me using some of them um, in the previous parts. So uh, let's quickly go through the theory. Um, so it's fairly simple because you stay in order to use this utility, you simply add the proper class like MT5, for example, which will stands for margin top five. And this will give us some a little bit space over here. Now, um, as you can see uh, already, M stands for margin, P stands for padding, and there are different um, way you can combine it. So uh, like we did, so usually you start with property and then side. So you do like margin and then side, which is top, and then the value. So the size uh, is from zero to five. It's also accept auto, which we're gonna use in a second. Um, basically, um, Bootstrap defined a spacer, so like a basic value and different different numbers, different values here from zero to five are actually multiplying this by different values. Like here, it's 25% of the basic spacer. So uh, this one will, will make it to 25%. And then it will, the two will multiply it um, all, all by half. So it's actually it's gonna it's gonna use half of the value. Three is the default spacer, and, and then four and five is like the again a bigger um, amount, like one and a half times more, and then three times more than the basic value. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's see let's see how does it work in the practice. And also, by the way, this is um, something which I also mentioned to you already. So bootstrap in the version five change. Uh, the naming convention. So before we had top, bottom, left, right. So, but now it's start and the end because of um, because of uh, RTL, right? So right to left or left to right, uh, depending on which one you use. Um, before we go to the spacings, let's um, let's let's add some border here because that uh, will just make it. Um, a little bit easier to see what we want to achieve. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the border to this, uh, which will give us this border. Uh, it's, it's very light. Actually, I lost the top uh, margin. Okay, that's cool. And now uh, to make it a little bit thicker, I'm going to add border one to define the size. And also I'm going to do border dark. Okay, so this is gonna uh, make it uh, slightly bigger. So this is what you can see here. Uh, you can again obviously define whether you want to have the entire border or, or just the one of the borders or one of the corners. So um, yeah, you can obviously define a color of, of the border like we've been doing uh, before. So with the colors, um, you probably already noticed that we've been using this primary, secondary, success, danger and so on. Let's have a look how the colors utilities looks and work like. So we have this basic colors <clears throat> defined and we can use them for uh, both coloring our content like a text or um, also to do the backgrounds. 
So this is here background, which uses exactly the same, you know, colors. Uh, it just uses different classes. So background primary, background secondary, and so on and so on. Um, there are different color variations over here, right? Uh, you can even specify the gradients. Um, you can you can specify the opacity. And so this is all uh, possible with an uh, Bootstrap. Mm, now talking about the colors, as everything, as almost everything with an Bootstrap, it's it's uh, customizable. So so uh, there, are, there are variables which you can adjust if you want to change the skin color. Um, but, you know, I, I hope you get the, the point that if you are using everywhere, like, you know, the primary, secondary, and so on and so on. So once you define, decide to change the color scheme, uh, to change the layout of your page in the future, you just change the single value and it's going to update everywhere in the in the page. Okay, so uh, we've got this one. Uh, what we are missing to have the same um, kind of result over here, we need to also shrink it a little bit. Mm, so uh, let's do it with the um, size. So if you go to the sizing utility, you're going to see something which I already used before. So I want to add W50, which is going to set this width to the 50%, right? And we need to center it. We need to center it. Um, so um, for for the centering, this um, we also did it in the previous. But let's just go to the uh, position. So uh, oh, actually, position uh, it's something different. Positions uh, is where you can define um, your um, your position value, like static, relative, absolute. What we are actually looking for um, is within the spacing so where we just started just down below it's horizontal centering um so we're gonna use uh, mx auto which are uh, gonna set our margins to um to auto uh from on both sides or so mx uh, I, I think i didn't mention that so i think it's a good time to say about it because um maybe you've seen it already uh, however, uh, except for the specific directions like a top, bottom, a start and the end, you also have the axes, right? So the X will work on the X axis and the Y will work on the Y axis. So the horizontal and the vertical one. Okay, so now once we have work on the, on the alignment and the border, let's uh, see how the, these paddings look um, in work. Um, so uh, let's do uh, let's do something like this. Let's say we're gonna have padding left. or actually start five. This is gonna add as this padding from the left side, which you can see over here. Obviously, we could do it from the right side. So then we need to switch to end padding end. We can do the top. Uh, we can have different values. So we could have p uh, t five and p start only three let's say so you see that the values are different um then again we can do px5 which is going to give us paddings for both from the both directions the left and the right um or we can just say if we don't specify the direction itself it's going to apply this to all the directions on top right uh, bottom and the left as well now the same applies to the margins so let's work on that using um, this uh, paragraph so i'm going to add class here so then again you can see that if i do margin top five this i've been using this uh, a bit uh, it's going to add me the margin here if i want to do margin uh, y so in both directions it should change this uh, just space over here let's let's see how it works without so this class is incorrect now so we don't have any margins here if i go to five it will add both from the top and the bottom um so yeah i will leave it to five so it's going to add me margin from each and every direction and finally this uh diff what we what we have here we have a width 50 so you already know that right so class it's w 50 for 50 percent we need to we need to uh, align it so let's do mx auto to set it in the center mm, what else we have here oh we have a text alignment we didn't talk about it um but we i think i've used it already uh, in the previous example but let's just see how it works so uh for this we just need to do text center and this will do 
the same here so this mm, this text alignment uh, was there before in the mm, where we were talking about the typography um, so this is this is something you already seen now what else we have here we have background um, so if I go with background light I believe I'm gonna get a little bit a bit grayish over here it's slightly gray I'm not sure if you can see it so let's do background dark then that should give us the pretty much the same uh, dark gray color and finally text white for the white color so this is again what you can find here in the colors right so um, you can either use this primary secondary uh, but there are also mm, colors which are uh, predefined like you have the blue indigo purple and so on and so on um, you can also use the gray scale right so you have a gray 100 gray 300 and so on so you can achieve this as well with uh, simple use of classes what else we have here so we talk about backgrounds we talk about the borders we talk about the colors uh, display obviously you can you can define whether you want to how you want to display a given element so you don't need to change the display property you can just add simply add the, for example the um, none so this will this will make our paragraph totally disappear let me revert the change and now the paragraph is back what is also interesting is that you can also use the breakpoints right we already learned about the breakpoints where we were talking about the grid so we can actually apply um, apply this on these certain uh, breakpoints on the certain screen size so for example if you want to see uh, let's say we want to be something visible only on the uh, let's say medium size uh, let's do let's add this here so now our um, our div is visible. However, oh, oh, obviously this is uh, I didn't remove dots. So now it got disappeared, and when we increase the size of the screen, we should see that it will pop up once we reach oh where are you oh now it is so because we had d none so basically we don't display this um, on starting from smallest screen then we have the empty block so if we are on the medium size uh, breakpoint between medium and large then we can see it and then if we go to large again it's going to be disappearing right so if you want to do this on the specific uh, screen size that we, that's how you can do it so you can specify very complex rules or if we just get rid of this the lg none then it will be just simply um, invisible on the small screen until we got the medium size and then after we start make it bigger bigger it will be visible right so this is very very useful to for example you know hide something on the mobile or show something on only on mobile um so uh yeah let's get familiar with this one because it's gonna be very useful now flex um obviously um flex is is um very um important in the web development so again instead of using the the flex um uh, styles uh, or CSS properties you can simply add the classes which gonna be uh, using and utilizing the flex so uh, we're gonna do uh, another example uh, on that let's grab something from here um, so uh, yeah I mean as you already know I mean if you are f not familiar with flex then obviously uh, please uh, do uh, check the tutorial on flex first because otherwise it's going to be a little bit confusing but other than that if you are actually familiar with flex already then you can uh, use just um, you can you can easily see in the documentation um, how to apply this uh, flex properties with just simple use of the um, classes right so the classes utilities which will um, do this for us and we don't need to type the CSS um, ourselves so basically long story short just to enable flex you should do the deflex which is gonna make uh, which gonna apply flex to this to this container um, and then we can we can start working on a different uh, example here um, 
So uh, yeah, let's just grab one of those from here and let's let's check this out. Let's add border so we could see it and border dark margin top five so something you already know and now let's just check how it looks in the in console so you will clearly see that this d flags uh class is setting this display to flex and then uh, the flex row is setting this to to row and then uh obviously we can we can we can we can we can uh, just play with it we can have like flex row reverse right so uh this will reverse the um the order right so now it's one two three here although it's like one two three here in the code uh we can go to columns right so if you want to set change to columns instead of rows you can also do it just simply changing this class so we have columns now and so on and so on that which gives you a lot of you know option just to justify content easily talking about justification bootstrap also uh, helps you to uh, vertically align so everyone who was trying to vertically align uh, or center or something you know that um, it in the past it used to be a, a, a real pain um for the developers to do it with the css now uh, you can simply just use the align middle and that will just uh, set it to a middle so yeah also very very useful um utility float we've been using already with images right so simply set float start float and keep in mind not using left right this start and the end um what else the interaction right when you click on it it's gonna select the entire text right this doesn't have the behavior and this can't be selected so a lot of utilities which just makes your life easier you can change the opacity with the simple class and the value over here um, change the overflow uh, so then again if you want to have a scroll or not if you want your content to overflow simply say overflow visible just add the class and your your, your content will become um, automatically visible hidden if you want to cut it out like we could do with our image example right if when it was too big we could just set it to overflow hidden and then our image won't go out of the um out of the div uh, out of the parent div out obviously um yeah if we didn't use the image fluid uh, for to make it responsive, then it would be obviously invisible uh, fully, right? So the part of the image would be just gone. Position we talked uh, already, right? So you can arrange, uh, you can set it to static relative, and then if you go def decide to um, to uh, to go with the absolute or relative you can also specify like position absolute top 50 start 50 and this will set it to correspondingly um shadows uh we haven't used it i believe so let's just uh, quickly have a look so let's do shadow large so we could see the result easily and let's add it to our div here so this is gonna give nice shadow around the element over here um, and then finally, we talked uh, about sizing, like we said, width, width and, and height, and spacings, margin, padding,s text. Um, so uh, yeah, this is this is uh, about, for example, wrapping an overflow for the text right here, uh, vertical line, and visibility, which uh, you can all, which can be also. Um, adjusted with the use of visible or invisible class. Okay, so now let's get back to content and specifically to the table. So um, I've got you two tables here. Um, and we're gonna make one of uh, one of this table responsive, table responsive. Uh, and I'm also gonna show you what else we can do with the bootstrap classes. 
um, how we can easily change and 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 adjust it. Um, so uh, first, let's let's make it uh, let's make this uh, responsive. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add um, this table responsive. MD. So I'm, I'm specifying not only that I want to, this table to be responsive, but I'm also specifying the breakpoint uh, from which onwards I want this to be uh, responsive. So as you can see, the upper table is just getting shrinking, 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 uh, and the bottom one got the scroll, which allows us to easily browse it, for example, on the mobile, right? So this is how you can... Um, this is how you can you can do it and there is uh, much more uh which you can actually do with the uh, you know with the uh tables using uh using bootstrap so let's have a look at just few examples because again obviously as you can see there are a lot options here like you know we can play with uh, table footer header styling them easily uh so i just want to show you uh, a few um examples which are used uh, most often here we got the table responsives uh, so um, yeah so it can be always responsive or it can be on the specific breakpoint uh, so um, what else we can do with uh, with the with the table mm, we can easily um, and this is something which bootstrap was working on um, very hard uh, when it migrated from bootstrap 4 to bootstrap 5 uh, i mean uh, a dark team so if we do table dark it's gonna change our uh, table to the dark mode which is very handy because you know with just single switch you know that a lot of pages do have now right this um this night mode uh which programmers do love so much uh, at least i do um what else if you want to uh, make it bordered simply just type table bordered bordered and this will add as those borders and as you've seen the docs you can also specify which borders you want which borders you don't want to um let's add table hover and let's see what's going to happen so now we can when we hover over the uh, given row it's going to highlight so it's also very very useful when it comes to the uh, big tables with a lot uh, amount of data um, you can also to make it easier for your users to to read the data you can add table stripped which will basically uh, make every odd cell having a different uh, color and you can also change colors right like everything with bootstrap you can do table primary for example which is going to change the color or info and you have a nice overview of all this uh, variants here right so you have all the colors and options here um yeah so these are the most important um uh, utilities which you can use with your tables as you can see it's very very easy and you can um, very quickly uh, change and adjust your existing table because what you have to do this is just a very plain table html table what you have to do is just to add a proper class to it and it's going to look amazing thanks to bootstrap Okay, so now I would like to talk about the two other components which are very useful to make your site uh, more dynamic. So if you're creating some platform or, you know, some dashboard admins, uh, very often you want to show some kind of notification. So there are two interesting components which Bootstrap offers you to use. The first one is called Alerts. So um, this is how it looks like. Uh, you might be, you know, you, familiar with those kind of alerts. Whenever you are working with some platforms, you click on something and then usually in the top, you can see this kind of alert. This is very um, easy, like most of the components uh, within a Bootstrap. But what is most important, for, except for the fact that uh, this is a is simply simple to use, simple to create, that you can add icons to it, um, is you change color, is that they are uh, dismissible. So, you know, whenever you show it, you can also get rid of it by just clicking this X icon. So let's have a look how, the, how to build it. And um, yeah, as you can see, this is this is very simple because you just need to use uh, a proper classes. So the uh, first use alert and then uh, a color. So this is the primary one. So we just use an alert and alert primary. 
Um, and if you want to make it dynamic, you should also keep in mind to, to use the role. And now Bootstrap uh, utilizes the SVG icons. Uh, so if you want, you can easily add um, your icons to the alerts. So simply add SVG and I'm going to show you more icons um, soon. Um, and finally, if you use uh, a Bootstrap uh, plugin, and the other plugin all or uh, the uh, compiled bootstrap javascript uh, version which we are using here then um, simply by adding this uh, data attribute or actually adding this button here right so this is this is button and the one you can see over here this is just a button which looks like this um, and by giving them uh, this class button close and this data BS dismiss um, attribute, it will work and it will automatically uh, do the job. So it will just remove it. So just keep in mind that uh, when you dismiss, uh, it's actually being completely removed from the page structure. Now let's move to the next one, which is toast. And the toast are a little bit smaller um, elements on the page which are also dismissible and they can be also shown uh, on request so um, let's let's uh, let's check this one um, so I'm gonna copy in this example here I'm gonna create another row for it actually um, we don't need row specifically because uh, by default it's not visible and we need to use the um, we need to use the JavaScript uh, to create uh, a button, which will basically, uh, which will basically uh, make it live. So, as you can see, it's popping up here in the bottom right corner. So, actually, let's use this example, which we have here, because what is important here is uh, this piece of JavaScript, and we're gonna go through it. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's have a button and the um, toast so uh, basically the the structure is pretty simple uh if you use this code uh, prob probably doesn't make sense to uh, you know um, type it all by yourself simply copy the example and then adjust whatever you need so uh, here you can have an image right this is the image they used uh, you've got the header bootstrap and then some some extra information uh, button close which you already know from alerts and then the body of your message uh, you can customize it you can add images you can get add content uh, it's up to you and then we need this uh, this uh, piece of uh, Java script over here so let's add script tag here and let's paste it let's see if this works so here we've got our toast on the left side this time so as you can um, imagine you can easily um, adjust uh, either uh, content or behavior so whether you want to uh, whether you want to uh, show this uh, this this um, toast on the left or on the right side you can uh, you can easily customize it if you want a few of them right so you want to stack them here we have just single single uh, notification single toast over here however maybe you want to show two or three or four or five or more uh, then they will they, they can also stack one below the, each other so mm, you can uh, you can you can just just do that uh, don't forget to add some spicing uh, to it mm. now maybe let's have a look at this uh, piece of um, piece of uh, JavaScript over here because what it does uh, first it uh, create a link to the to the button right so to the to the button you can see over here uh, so we assign it to the toast trigger and then um, we are uh, getting this toast live example uh, which is here live toast right so you you catch your toast by um, by uh, id and then you uh, whenever this is clicked, uh, you simply use the show option. Mm, there should be the other example here. And um, there is the usage, right? So if you have multiple uh, toasts, you can also use, um, you can initialize them this way. So um, simply just uh, 
search for all the elements with the class toast and then you'll end up with the list of, uh, of the, with the array of the all toast you have and then you can uh, you know if you have five different toasts, you can basically uh, trigger all of them or just provide, you know, like number one, two, three or five. Um, very often you also want to, you know, dynamically create them. So that's, that's, that's also possible. Let's see what uh, what else you can do. So for the placement, uh, you can uh, you can you can place them uh, using uh, different CSS options. Uh, so for example, middle center, let's have a look. Uh, let's check these classes over here. So here you have this div class at uh, container, and then you have um, position absolute top 50, start 50. So this will be the center, um, bottom. So yeah, you can play with it and see how to how to place them in uh, in the in the uh, in the place you actually want it to be placed at your page. Mm, so uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, that's really really cool. And let's go to methods which are available. So basically, obviously we can show, we can we can hide, we can dispose if you don't want to get uh, this and get instance. So uh, yeah, this allows us to to just grab the uh, the our. Uh, toast and then we can dynamically change the content of it so technically you could also have just one toast and 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 keep on changing the content you want to display to uh to the user so yeah i mean really put your hands on it because it's uh, i think you're gonna use it a lot sooner or later you will need this kind of notification in your project uh, if you're building something more advanced so uh, this is a very very uh, handy tool to show user notification, like you know the Facebook notification or, or Messenger or something, uh, you are seeing this everywhere. Okay, now it's time to talk about the nav bar. So the navigation bar you can see on uh, many pages, actually probably all of them, and they have it now. What is so cool about this nav bar? It is that it's re responsive by uh, design by default. Um, so as soon as you shrink your screen to the uh, you know tablet to the mobile size, it's gonna uh, automatically collapse, and then you can. Uh, use this so-called hamburger to uh, basically show or hide the content which is there which um, saves a lot of space uh, especially when it comes to uh, mobile devices so uh, let's have a look how how does it work with bootstrap as always bootstrap uh, gives us uh, like a basic example which we can work on it's a little bit complex so obviously we're not going to go through all of uh, these classes because that's not the point uh, to you know to to learn it uh, and know it by heart each and every line and uh, that's not the point that's why we have a docs for and uh, so 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 simply uh, you can start by just grabbing the basic nav bar and then do some adjustment to it so that's what I did here I've got uh, the um, I've got the uh, the basic example what I changed here um, because I wanted this to be dark so actually you know what let's me let me do this from scratch again so let's get rid of this nav bar and just use the basic one so this is the basic uh, nav bar and now we want to work on uh, that so first thing you could uh, or might want to change is whether you want to have the full width or not you can simply adjust it and change it by ch changing this container either to fluid or if you keep the simple container then it will get them to um, to the center so as you can see this is going like here and then if you get container it's more to the center you can see it's clearly on the on the bigger screen so this is fluid and this as a normal container so if you want to have these margins from the left and the right then you should go with the container one and that's what i'm going to stick to now um let's say you want to have i want to have a logo in here very simple this is uh, this is called uh, this is part which is called brand and uh, you can see this over here and here is navbar brand right so this is what we what we've got here we want to change it just scroll it down and find what you like so i would like to have the image over here so i'm gonna add uh, this image over there so let's say it's navbar and i want to have an image here and let's grab some 
uh, existing image because obviously I don't have the bootstrap one here. So let's just replace it with some logo. And here it is. Uh, let's change the uh, color, the size actually. Make it a little bit slightly bigger. Okay, I think now it looks better now. Maybe even slightly bigger. Right, that could be f nice. And now, um, I like the dark one, so I wanted to, to do the dark one. Um, so simply scroll down until you find a proper section. Here you have the color scheme. So probably that's what we are looking for, right? Yeah, and they have different uh, color scheme. And then again, you can see, you, you can notice um, this pattern here. So um, like with the, all the other components, you just have to use the proper class, the color class. Um, so you could use like a primary if you want to have a primary color. I will go with the uh, navbar dark and background dark. So if I go with the background dark only, let's change the light to a dark, you will notice that I've got the dark navbar. However, my links, the text over here, is not really readable, right? So that's why we need also this navbar dark. So we change this navbar light to navbar dark and that's gonna change also the font color. Mm. Okay, now, secondly, now, um, um, if you don't want something in your navbar, simply just search for it in here. Um, I don't want to get this disabled here. Uh, and by the way, if you are not familiar, and that might be a little bit confusing right at the beginning, because there are many elements over here, uh, I strongly encourage you to just open the uh, web developer tools and then go to the elements and try to just search for element you are looking for, for example, this one. Right, so this is the element, and you can, for example, press delete and see whether you have the uh, result you want. Right, if something, if you if you do something wrong, let's say you remove the wrong element uh, accidentally, then nothing easier. Just refresh the page, and you're gonna get back all the original HTML. And the same applies to whatever changes you want to do. So let's say I want to have this one. I'm gonna edit this, and I'm gonna copy paste. And I got two drop downs now, right? So now you can play, you have a kind of sandbox, um, which you can work on. So um, yeah, let's let me let me get rid of uh, this disabled one because obviously I want all my links uh, to be active, um, working in my navbar. So that's cool. Obviously, I would could add some more links here if I be uh, doing the real page, um, but that's uh, up to the use case you want to you want to achieve, right? Mm, you're gonna find many examples with the code um, here container. So that's what we talk about the placement, all uh, right? So we have option for the default one. Uh, so the default will basically um, if I'm gonna scroll down, it's gonna disappear. Let's see, actually, let me add, let me add something at the bottom here. Let's do a div and let's do some nasty thing. It's going to add eight. Right, so it disappears. And then if we do a fixed up to our navbar, so we have nav class fixed up. It will just stick to the top. So regardless whether you are scrolling or not, it will be always there. Um, now, because it's uh, uh, because when, when we do it like this, the position is absolute. So now this margin doesn't work anymore. Uh, we had a margin over here on this element. Let me just get rid of it. So you will see there was margin here but it doesn't work for that. So we would uh, also keep in mind to, to, to always keep this margin from the top for each and every element, because otherwise Navbar will simply, it will ignore the, um, the margins, which are there. You can also do the fixed bottom if you have it on the bottom uh, and sticky top so that it will just stick to the top when you start scrolling if it's not there, right? So if, for example, this was our Navbar and we start scrolling, it will just stick, go here and then stick at this, uh, at this uh, height, just to the top, like the sticky one. Um, yeah, a lot of different options here. And um, yeah, I also wanted to show you two more things. 
Um, so one is uh, this uh, external content option. So if you, for some reason, want to use this functionality outside the uh, navbar itself, you can do it. Bootstrap give you this example, very simple, right? So we have just navbar, a very simple one, as you can see, not many, not many classes, and the toggler over here, and. Um, what's going on here is that by using this data BS target attribute and using the same name as we have here, we are actually uh, con combining this 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 uh, this button, this hamburger. Or we are connecting this to this element so it knows which one to collapse. If you have more of them, don't forget to use the unique IDs over there. New component introduced in Bootstrap five. Um, off canvas, so the menu on the right, the side menu, which you can also uh, use the same way as you do with the navbar. So simply use the basic example and then just start playing with this around and changing, adjusting uh, to your needs. So that's uh, mostly about the navbar. Um, probably sooner or later you're gonna uh, need that you're gonna use it um, for um, for the page you will be building or even the application right a lot of the application uh, use it um, like I know Instagram and so on so 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 take time to play with it um, because because you will be using this for sure and now let's move to uh, navs navs and tabs so another category of components which you can uh, find uh, which I'm finding very useful and you can uh, I hope you will also gonna like it. So the base nav is um, you know used for the navigation. Um, if you want to have this, um, um, just the links, right? You can call it just the menu on certain page. So it's not stri strictly like a nav bar. It's not always uh, sticked. It's something like you have. Um, I don't know. Let's see on some pages, Amazon.com, for example. So as you can see, this is the navigation I'm talking about, right? The, the basic navigation, which is below the uh, nav bar uh, over here. So the base nav. Uh, so this is exactly the same uh, what you've got here. By the way, um, we've been talking about different components. Look how the uh, Amazon page is built. Nav bar. So we just discussed it. Nav over here. Um, slider or carousel, so-called. Cards. We've been covering uh a few minutes back and yeah and then footer and some links here so this is the basic setup which you use and uh, which bootstrap offers you and with use of them you can just recreate literally any page in the internet so this is the base navigation uh it's, it's again very very simple right you just have a basic structure and then you just uh, use as many links as you want however what is even more interesting are so-called um tabs so what the tabs are, tabs uh, allows you to change the content. Uh, so these are our tabs here. Let me show you and then how they look in an inspector. So this is the entire. So this, this is, these are tabs and this is the content, tab content, right? It's very small here. Obviously it could uh, be much, much bigger. Uh, it could be even with the entire page right so it could take the entire page and we could change the content of the page uh, while changing to different tab this is very handy you can see this a lot when you work with the um for example the admin panels right so imagine this is the settings page and uh, you want to say i don't know like here right so the some settings some general settings some profile uh, adjustments uh, and whatever right and the same with the vertical one so imagine this is some kind of you know application and you can uh, edit your profile so here will be your I don't know, personal information here will be some um, work related info and so on so this is very um, useful and you can see that this is very dynamic right so you don't have to reload the page you, you can you're gonna have all of that on the single page and then again if you go to uh, to this um and scroll to the proper section you will get this tabs right home profile contact um very simple usage right so we have two sections here we have uh, pills 
which are here one two three and then we have this uh, kind of placeholders so we have three of them as well and now what we have to do so this is the content going here uh, what you need to do you need to just make sure that you have the corresponding um corresponding uh ids over here so look this is the home tab right so this is this is called home so we have this aria labeled by home and the id is pills home and this um yeah let me actually show you this in the source code it's gonna be much better visible so let's go to our tabs so this is the example all right, so this is Peel's home, and this Peel's home corresponds with this uh, button here. So uh, it uh, has to match this data BS target. So it this target, and this has to be the same. So if you are just adding new one, let's let's add something new here. Mm, so contact tab, let's add new one and let's call it um i don't know maybe just other so i'll just change this to other also this one right and now we need to have the new nav item here so i'm gonna make a copy of this and now what we need to do here is we need to change this to other other so this id has to current correspond this is the other and this is obviously other and that's how we get the new tab in the, in our page right very simple very very easy and exactly the same way if you want to work with the vertical which example you've got over here Okay, now I would like to uh, talk a little bit about something which is not specifically a bootstrap component because it's a separate project, however, it's created by the same team. And I'm thinking about the icons. So if you go to the extent and icons, you're going to see this page uh, where you're going to see a, a the list of alternative options. So if you're familiar with Font Awesome uh, or this Octi icons or whatever icons you've been using, uh, there are some options here. Uh, so you, uh, f you know, feel free to, to use them. Um, however, Bootstrap uh, recently came up with their own set of icons and I really like it. I feel like they are really, really uh, um, yeah, good uh, looking icons and what's most important there are like 1500s already so so it's a lot and I'm pretty sure that most of the icons you might be looking uh, for to use within your project inside your project you're gonna find it here so uh, how to use it it's very simple uh, you have uh, all icons listed here so if you're looking for something uh, let's say Wi-Fi you simply just search for it and then you choose and click on it and then you're gonna get uh, three options um, first you're gonna have have examples so you're gonna see that you're gonna have a preview how it looks like and how you can use it with the uh, sample examples of like you know how it's gonna look in the button or in the input mm. now what you can do now to use it you can uh, either download this like SVG so simply hit and save and that's gonna save you the, uh, the image um, and uh, then you just load it uh, as you would do with any kind of any image uh, you use on the page. Uh, other option, which we're going to cover later, is to use it as icon, but then you need to include um, uh, the, the font, the CSS for that. Um, I want to show you this before we move to, to the icon font. So this is simply the HTML, this is SVG. So this is like a row code of this icon. So this path is basically, you know, the SVG consists of these lines, paths, and this is just you know these are the the points uh so the browser now know how to um, draw this icon so it's very simple to use because you just copy this and then you simply paste it mm. And here it is, this is our icon, right? Uh, you can change the size uh, to something bigger, let's say 50, uh, using this width and hide properties, or you can also do it like you would do with any other HTML element. So you can just create some um, class, let's say icon, and then create some custom style for it. So I'm gonna call it icon and define a width 
of 200 pixel and that's gonna work as well now coming back to the installation so the icon installation simply hit the install button that's gonna scroll down to this section um, as you can see there are uh, many options how you can install it you can do npm mm, you can download the entire entire library or you can use the cdn so i'm gonna use this one uh, so let's just paste it in our head tag and now coming back to icon let's grab something uh, we can simply just copy this icon font, this i uh, tag, and paste it here down below or next to our icon. It's small, um, obviously. Uh, so again, how to change the size? You can do it with styles. So set the font because it's like font. So just set the font size to whatever it is. I don't know, 50 pixels, let's say, or 200. You can also change uh, font color. Obviously, uh, you just work with it like you would be doing with the um, any other font. And as I said, I mean, you know, I think you have pretty much uh, every icon you could possibly need in a project. Like, so, you know, some hamburgers over here. Yeah, I mean, just give it a try. And uh, I really like this and I really like having those icons uh, and everything within the same ecosystem of Bootstrap. Okay, so now let's talk about um, so important components that Bootstrap finally decide to provide um, a separate section for it uh, within their docs because uh, recently in the Bootstrap 4 uh, they didn't have it and now we have like the separate uh, category for forms. So um, yeah, Bootstrap, as um, like with the other components, it's making um, our life easier um, by um, supplying us with the certain classes, which makes our uh, inputs and, and uh, other uh, form controls simply look better. And uh, let's uh, yeah, let's see what we have here and what we're gonna do is we're going to build some uh, some contact form. Uh, so uh, when we're not going to go uh, into each and every um, control because that would take like, you know, probably a few hours just to just to cover all of that. But we're going to build like the um, very uh, common contact form. And then I'm going to show you a couple more examples of what you can do also with the form. So um, yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, let's open this in live server. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with uh, some uh, text, let's say. So um, you know, let's have text center and inside it, I want to have h2 get in touch. So that's, uh, yeah, that's gonna be uh, our heading. And then let's have p uh, lead something like, I know, um, questions do not hesitate to contact us okay now let's add some row and we're gonna also add justify content center so it will be always centered and let's also add some margins here and we're gonna add um, some uh, forms but before we're gonna add forms let's add also some column so uh, there's gonna be large um, there's gonna be six on the large screens and on the smaller one uh, it's gonna just uh, take the full width and inside it let's start creating our form so I'm gonna do form I'm gonna leave the action empty for now because we are not uh, adding any logic to it we will just creating the front end part for it and let's start with the label so if we do a simple label for email, because we're gonna that, that's what we're gonna start with, uh, it's gonna look like this. And let's add input type email, okay? And then let's give ID email, and uh, what we can else have? We can have placeholder, obviously, something like um, my email dot com. So this is how <coughs> it looks like. Uh, just by using the normal forms and loading bootstrap CSS however we can we can make it even better because if we add class form label to our label and we're gonna add class form control 
that's what's gonna happen. And uh, yeah, let me let me add uh, show you a few more examples, and then we're gonna uh, also talk about uh, variation you can have with uh, with uh, Bootstrap uh, forms and inputs. So let's add another one, and let like, let me just copy paste this one because we will have it for name and name and name, and then let's say an I example. David. Okay, we're not um, gonna bother with the uh, spacing queue. We're gonna we're gonna fix it uh, later. Uh, so we have two inputs uh, now. Let's uh, add some select. Uh, so we're gonna add again label, and that's gonna be for subject of our uh, email, and we're gonna add again class form label, and then we're gonna call it subject. Okay, and now we have select. So just the normal select, except for the fact that we're gonna um, add, actually we don't need this name, but uh, I'll just keep it. Um, class form select, and then we're gonna add some options here. So option, and it's gonna be, let's say uh, pricing. Oh, it should be pricing. And let's make a copy of it. What else we could have here? Possibly uh, technical. And some others. Or general. Whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this is our this is our um, select now. And if we want to have some default value selected, then we just add this selected to the given uh, option and it's gonna work like a chart. And finally, let's add some text area so the user could write us some uh, some message. So again, label, and that's gonna be our query. Uh, so write a message and then we're gonna have a text area. And obviously, oops, text area. Uh, it's gonna be query, query, call throw. So we're gonna set it to default, and but we're gonna add class form control. Okay, so this is it. Maybe a little bit uh, smaller. Oops, uh, meant to be smaller, not uh, bigger. Um, and then finally, let's add uh, maybe some div. Mm with text center and we're gonna add some button here so button uh, it's type it's gonna be submit and class it's gonna be btn i don't know btn primary let's use primary send okay uh it didn't work text center if i only can spell it properly um yeah so that's that's it and it's it's um yeah it could be a working form however let's tune it a little bit um with bootstrap 5 we can easily uh, create a pretty nice um pretty nice effect uh, on something called floating labels uh, so i'm going to show you that in a second um just one more thing here is that we could also have a placeholder i believe right something yeah this is it and it's gonna disappear uh, when we start typing that's cool however <clears throat> if we want to use this floating mm, then um, i'm gonna get rid of it i'm gonna show you uh, a nice trick i believe uh, which you can use when working with bootstrap form so let's do form floating and then let's do some uh, spacing my5 and now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just put it this inside div. And <clears throat> what happens now is that we don't need this, um, we don't need this, oh, actually we don't even have this, uh, uh, we didn't even have this class here. So we were missing this class form label, which should be there. Uh, however, when you work with floating, we don't, you, you should remove it. And then let's change the order of it. And so the text area comes first. And now see what's gonna happen. Uh, hold on, this is. Let's do. Uh, 
let's do this like that style and then a height of I don't know 200 pixel okay and now a little bit smaller 150 and then we have form floating text area and it doesn't work because we are actually missing this placeholder I believe yeah it can be empty for some reason yeah so now you can see you have this nice floating label over here and uh, we can actually do pretty much the same with uh, our inputs so let's do this now uh, let's uh, use it for name uh, okay so then what we have to do is we have to switch our label with the input that goes down below and now it's working fine see so you can also achieve this uh, very interesting effect on your inputs simply by using this um, this div with the form of floating class um, yeah so this is it this is how you actually work with it obviously the, there are more um, inputs here you have a range option uh, and you have a steppers and and you have a um, input groups i think this is also interesting where you can combine input with uh, other elements uh, so i prepared for you some uh, examples over here so uh, you can examine that uh, by yourself and play with it so if you want to play with some checkboxes uh, you have you have new really nice option like this intermediate checkbox right so we have like checked unchecked and this one is intermediate step uh, available uh, some range some file upload and and few more examples also with the validation that's also interesting because you can easily add um, the validation messages to the uh, to your inputs and then that's also a fairly simple way the uh, with the bootstrap because as you can see bootstrap comes with predefined um, labels you just find that it's invalid check right for the input and then you say what you want to uh, what you want to write so you have this uh, invalid feedback right so this you must agree before submitting and you also have this positive feedback uh, so here valid feedback which you use uh, together with along with the input uh, and this uh, this obviously gives a user a nice uh, positive feedback he knows that the message is that, that, that everything was fine and that you know for example the password he provided uh, was strong enough Okay, so we covered a lot of different components uh, which Bootstrap offers us. Uh, let's see what we haven't covered yet uh, and which we're not going to do in this video because it would take definitely too much time. But uh, these components are not that common, but they will still can be useful for you. So, for example, the accordion, right? So the kind of collapse, the difference between collapse and accordion is that accordion by default works like uh, this, which means that you can have only one active item right so we I, I cannot expand two at the same time uh, i just have to use the one and then again this is pretty much simple i mean there is a lot of code over here but obviously uh, i think um you can easily um play with it and understand how does it go because you can see that there's accordion items which are recurring elements right and then if you want to just add or remove it you simply copy paste add new one and then you have uh, you change the heading and then the content uh what else we have here we talk about alerts uh, badges you also uh, we often use them however again nothing fancy nothing nothing complex here it's just the span with the class badge and it will, that will kind of give you uh, this look you will see uh, this uh, being used for example in the notification like here or like this 
uh, so pretty pretty straightforward breadcrumbs again if you want to show user where are you now what are you doing um, I mean if you are going further into for example documentation like here you could show it uh, that we are at components and then breadcrumbs uh, maybe with two levels it doesn't make much sense but for example here if you go to variables maybe that would uh, make more sense for that um, we, we talked about the buttons um, you can obviously uh, uh, use button groups as well if you want to work with them so if you want to have to multiple buttons combine um, into each other we talked about the carousel uh, drop downs we didn't talk about it specifically but uh, yeah they work pretty much the same as you've seen in the navbar um, so that allows you to show um, you know more info on demand right so you can have uh, some info in the navbar and then if you want to have more links you can just add more and more drop downs list groups pretty much straightforward uh, similar to cards and panels we've seen so the panels but they are just uh, they're just just um, either using uh, lists um, and that's how you that's how they look like um, models this is also very uh, very in interesting and important uh, component so let's have a look at this a little bit closer uh, so again mechanic is pretty uh, pretty uh, much the same so first you just copy the model into your page uh, so let's add it here to our body so this is this is uh, this is model and it's not going to be visible uh, until we actually uh, fire this off so we would have to add the this uh, piece of javascript to it so this will fire when we click on the button so let's add this button over here okay and we will need to actually use this this uh, yeah I copied uh, I copied this model and this is different example the IDs are different but it's triggered by uh, uh, data uh, target data BS target so that you may need to make sure that this matches so you have this example model here and you have example model here over there uh, so then again for the model itself um, you have header you have body and you have footer so pretty much like we've been doing with cards so you can design it as you want you have different buttons over here is dismissible and then you can simply just add the trigger it is possible also to use javascript for that uh, so uh, if you want uh, you can you can um, do it from javascript and you're going to find more information how to do it here and change the configuration whether you want to have a backdrop light like this shadow uh, in the back this 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 gray which kind of makes your eye focusing on the model uh, so all of that can be controlled from uh, from the JavaScript um, and as always there are like different options because you can have like full screen models uh, you can have uh, large models small models extra large so you can you can decide um, and work on uh, different sizing and also uh, also when you want to display whether it's on the center or, or maybe to the right and so on you can embed different um, different things like you know you can embed for example the YouTube um, videos so uh, a whole lot of uh, possibilities to choose from and finally Obviously, uh, when you have uh, models, you can also uh, use different methods to show toggle, right? Toggle, so change it from show to hidden, hidden to show, show, hide, um, this pause, and so on, and so on. We talk about navs and nav bars, off canvas, we also covered. Um, so, uh, yeah, popovers, this is also interesting. That's also why we actually used, um, why we actually used popper. Uh, in the first place the popovers are pretty uh, similar um, to the tooltips right so let's see tooltips first so the tooltips you know when you hover over a certain element you can get you can show the user a certain um, tooltip with extra information which will make this easier for them to uh, you know 
get more familiar how to use your website. And when it comes to popover, it's pretty much the same. However, you need to click to toggle it. So if you click on it, it's gonna appear and it stays there. And if you want to hide it, you need to unclick it. Uh, and you can decide whether you want to, uh, whether you want user actually to specifically unclick on the button or you want him to unclick anywhere. Um, finally, spinners and scroll spy. So let's start with spinners. This is what you use when you want to um, load something, right? So you just use it. And then usually what we do in such case, we are actually uh, it doesn't work because I put it uh, probably inside, yeah, inside model. So let me get it out of model. Yeah. So this is the this is the spinner. So you use it when you want to show that something is loading. You can use it and combine it with, for example, uh, buttons, right? So now when the user click on something and waiting for the feedback, it's just giving you, him more information that he's actually waiting for something, and and and, and the page is doing some logic in and behind uh, and then once it's done you simply just use your js um, to change it uh, to to hide this element or to replace with something else um, progress so the progress bars uh, yeah pretty straightforward here uh, so depending on the value you set is in this attribute value now it will basically fill up the progress bar uh, to show the current status you can add labels like percentage you can change colors uh, and there are obviously different um the color version uh of uh, of this um as well as the you know multiple bars so if you want uh to show uh like you know for example that certain amount consists of three different values and then you can uh, use different colors to show it and finally uh scroll spy so uh this is this is also uh very useful uh which you can also see very often on the pages for example we are using this at our mdbootstrap.com if you go and check any kind of navigation we are using the scrolls by over here. So this uh, gives user, you know, the nice feeling where he, she exactly is now while uh, using this documentation. Uh, so yeah, this is also uh, handy. It's not that common. It's, it's a little bit more complex, but uh, sometimes you might want to use it. Uh, like here you have a navigation. However, you don't know where exactly you are. Obviously, I mean, you can match it here, but this visual, um, hint it's, it's it's always useful and you can see it uh, especially when it comes to you know technical uh, documentation okay so we cover a lot of components uh, obviously there are some more uh, to go through uh, however we're not going to do it in this video but let's wrap it up and actually use whatever we learn uh, in this course to build a proper website. So um, I'm going to start with this this, this uh, template where we have the bootstrap CSS and JS loaded and let's start uh, building our page. So I'm going to start with the header and inside this header I would like to have some nav bar. So let's find it out. Let's go to components and then check for nav bar and I'm going to grab the basic example. And I'm going to start with it. It's going to be good for the starting point. And I want to get rid of this disabled. And I want to, let's see what else I want to. I want to make it dark actually. Well, so now let's start with getting this disabled out. And let's see how we can change the color. Here it is. So I want to have navbar dark and navbar and background dark yeah this looks cool to me and i think that i might want to use container instead of the container fluid which will basically center my content okay so uh let's now do something which is called um uh, jumbotron it's not there in a uh, in the um, bootstrap 5 however in a bootstrap for um, bootstrap used to have something like this in the past so just like a catchy 
um, element which we can use to, you know, to um, catch someone's attention. And I would like to use it here on the page. Um, so let's go and do some. Let's do some greet. So I'm gonna do the main part. So I'm gonna just do the semantically uh, correct, and then let's do container. And inside this container, let's have a row and oh, let's have a row. And then inside it, I would like to have a call MD7 and then call MD5. So I don't want to have them to be equal. I want them, however, I still want them to sum up up to 12. So um, on the left side, I would like to have some image uh, with obviously image fluid uh, class and let's grab something from pixum which you already know oops i need to put it here uh, so we have it here on oh we already see that we are missing some spacing so let's add it class my5 okay so here we have image uh, if we change id we're gonna get some other image uh, so we can play with it and search for something which will suit you most uh, and as far as the right part is concerned i would stick it to some some catchy tagline so let's have uh, h1 and then let's say this is our tagline okay and within this tagline let's uh, also add for example some paragraph we need to get it a little bit uh, down and let's add some lorem i know 30 will that be sufficient yeah i think that's that's okay uh it can't be too long um obviously you normally we would use some catchy text over here it can be too long uh, because user need to read it quite fast and then let's add some button so we're gonna have a button uh, so the type is button and the class is btn and then btn primary and then margin top let's say five and then let's say i don't know call to action we want user to do something here yeah maybe this is too much how about three yeah i guess that's better and i would still do it I know let's do this class mt5 yeah i think it, now it looks cool so this blue uh, color responds with the image so uh yeah i i really like it now let's um let's add some call to action here now um so uh, i'm gonna show you how to create actually uh the um component which is not during bootstrap like we did with jumbotron just to show you that bootstrap is not only about the components it's also about the utilities and classes which you can use uh, to create and to design uh, your own um, ideas so uh yeah let's uh, add another row over here and now within this row let's just add the full call to be semantically correct and then um let's do something like that i want to have bg secondary color um bg secondary okay and let's add some text uh here lorem uh, 10 let's say okay yeah it doesn't look good yet but we will make it beautiful soon so we've got the um kind of dark background so probably it will be wise to change text to white or something lighter okay and now see uh what i'm gonna do i'm actually on a also wrap it up as a card body so i'm using the bootstrap component here and i'm gonna do some spacing here so my5 as well as py4 and let's also at card okay and i want this everything to be text centered 
And yeah, I think I think it's okay. Um, perhaps even a little smaller. Yeah, something like this would do. Mm, yeah, and maybe even. I think that that looks cool. Now, um, now let's uh, add some cards here um, to uh, show our latest blog posts. So I'm gonna add another row. And now let's see what we've got here. So let's get back to cards. And um, either we're gonna use three cards with an image, so uh, we can copy the basic example, or or we would go with the this card group. So I don't know which I like more. I think we haven't done card group yet, so let's do card group uh, in here. However, I would like to... No, we don't have the one with the button. So uh, let's do... We're going to add this manually. So let's do this here. We have a call and now let's put it... Let's place it like this. And now let's, um, let's add some images. So I'm just going to replace this one where it is source with number 200, 201, and then 202. So this is going to give me nice images. And let's just add a button. So again, you can type everything yourself, or you can just copy paste an existing um, sample and Let's, I don't know, should we put it above or should we put it uh, below? So let's try below. So I will do now multi cursor. So I'm just going to click here, here, and there with my Alt pressed. And now I can type in um, in, a few door, in a few places at the same time. So I'm going to add text center. And inside this, I'm going to put our um our button i'm gonna change it to read more and actually you know what i just did it let's do a um because we need this to be a hyperlink and then now i will just i'm not sure if you can see this clearly i'm just editing these three lines at the same time read more yeah and this will go here. And actually, I think I should do it. I should do it other way around. So I should. And actually, you know what? Let's get rid of this. We don't. I think user is not interested in whether it's been updated or not. Three minutes uh, because it's a blog post. Maybe if we were doing the magazine, that would be uh, more important. And you know what? As well, I don't want this to be centered. To be honest, when I look at it now, so let's just get rid of it and stick to the the basics. Okay, that's cool. And now finally, I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do some shortcut here. I'm just gonna get the form. So let's have this form here from here. And let's, oh, actually, I want to have this container. So, uh, yeah, I will need this row. Where are you? Hold on. I, I can see. Oh, oh, here it collapsed. And now let's, let's get this one. And let's change to the landing. Who? I need to find my row now. So this is main. This is number row number one, row number two, row number three, and is it? Yeah, this is the one, except for the fact that we need some spacing here as well. Okay, and finally let's go and find some bootstrap. Five footer. Oh, this is one of the option, uh, but let's just let's just do something like sticky footer. Um, okay. So 
So uh, this is footer. I'm gonna get this footer and I'm gonna go and add it here as a footer. And obviously I'm gonna change it to dark and let's see. Yeah, so this is our sticky footer at the bottom. And then we would do something like copyright https mdbootstrap.com mdbootstrap.com Cool. So, um, yeah, maybe this is not the most complex site you've ever seen, but I think we've created this like in what? Um, it was 10 minutes perhaps, um, I think it's even less. So uh, I hope that I just gave you this idea how quickly you can really prototype your pages with the use of the bootstrap components. Uh, and you can really, really nicely um, just organize everything. And because obviously you could write all of that by yourself, but A, it would take much, much longer. B, I mean, you would be actually reinventing the wheel so you would be fighting with you know making this uh, making this responsive uh, and this obviously by default is responsive uh, so it will adjust the screen it will look um, perfectly on each and every screen uh, you have a you have also scripts here so you know to create this drop down you can do it yourself but it's there it's been tested by millions of users so there's no point doing this uh, so i hope enjoy you enjoyed uh, this um, tutorial okay so finally i wanted to show you the last thing is uh, how you can easily publish your page so what you have to do to publish your page you simply open the command line i have the one which is built in in uh, visual studio code but you could also use a, a command line from windows or terminal from mac os whichever you are using navigate to the folder uh, of your choice and then i'm gonna go to cd landing uh, because this is where the uh, the page we uh, oh, we just created and the free code camp uh, is just a generic folder with all the subfolder. There is no index.html file, so uh, I will need this index.html file or actually landing uh, to be there. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's also rename it into index.html. So as you know, then the browser will know uh, that this is um, this is the the entry file. And then what you have to do is just simply type mdb publish and it's going to ask you whether you want to use npm or yarn i'm going to stick with the npm it's going to ask about the name so let's do the free code camp bootstrap 5 let's say and few more options i'm going to just accept the default ones i'm going to hit enter and what you're going to see is that this is going to be updated within uh, just a second and you're going to see the url over here when you click it boom your patch has been just deployed to the server and this is, uh, this is there. Uh, this is secured with SSL and it's absolutely free. If you don't have it uh, yet, simply navigate to mdbgo.com and there's where you can find the installation procedure. So it's, you have to install this MDB tool. So you'll be able to do MDB um, in your command line. So npm install minus g mdb cli and just create uh, the free account so you would be able to do mdb publish on your account with your URL.